Let's look at the integral to calculate the coefficient a of omega. What's happening here is we're integrating out r and we're left with omega. So we're starting with a function of r, we're performing an integral on it where we are integrating out r and we are returning with a, a function of omega. So we're transforming from r to omega. Similarly here on the right side for b of omega, we're transforming from f of r to b of omega. So these integrals are performing a transform for us. It's also very important to note that we have still remained or we've still kept this scaling term 1 over pi. So I'm sure you can see that this is actually the scaling term in the Fourier transform. We'll be missing perhaps a 2 or a root 2 pi, whichever, depending on which version of the Fourier transform you're using. But we've now gone from discrete Fourier series to continuous Fourier integrals, where the integrals calculating a of omega and b of omega stretch from minus to positive infinity, whereas the outer integral stretches only from zero to infinity. Now in video one of three, I discussed the Fourier cosine and sine series. So if you want to know a bit more about that, you should go backwards. I'm not, I'm just going to uh, assume you've seen that. So where our function f of t is even, the b of omega term or the odd terms are going to be zero and we'll only be left with a of omega and f of t in terms of a of omega. We're left with the Fourier cosine integral. Now I'm going to do a small bit of a sleight of hand. A moment ago I noted that the integral for a of omega and b of omega went from minus infinity to positive infinity. But we're integrating cosine which is an even function with respect to r anyway in this particular integral here. Therefore I'm able to actually integrate from 0 to infinity and double it so I get this extra 2 here. And the reason I'm doing it is I want some similarity between the two integrals I'm performing. What we're actually looking at here is a transform pair. And that's what this is here, it's a transform pair. There are actually, believe it or not, two transforms in here. And I've written them in the bottom of your screen as the forward and reverse cosine transform. So what I've done first of all is removed the dummy variable r in favor of the initial variable t. And I've called the function which is the result of this capital F of omega. And we go from small f of t to capital F of omega. So we're transforming from f of t to capital F of omega. So we're going from the temporal frequency, temporal domain to the temporal frequency domain, or the spatial domain to the spatial frequency domain. It's also important to note what I've done with this scaling term, the 2 over pi. Because we're dealing with a Fourier transform pair, I can put this scaling term anywhere I want, or even the, the, anything that gives me the ratio of which would give me that scaling term. So I could put the entire 2 over pi on the forward transform, the reverse transform, or I could split it up. Here I have split it up. So let's look at the forward transform in a bit more detail. We're starting with our initial function f of t. So this here is the forward transform. So we input f of t. We multiply it by cosine of omega times t and integrate it dt from 0 to infinity. We scale it by root 2 over pi and we get into the frequency domain and we have cosine as the basis function. The use of that of course is something I'm going to discuss in video number three. So in order to go from the function in the frequency or Fourier domain, we perform the inverse transform. So we input the capital F of omega multiplied by cosine of omega times t, integrated d omega with the scaling term and we get back our original function. And that's why these are called Fourier pairs. 
So in this case, this is the cosine transform or the Fourier cosine transform. A very similar argument can be performed for the cosine, excuse me, for the Fourier sine transform, where our initial input function f of t is an odd function, and therefore we're able to get our sine transform. Note, by the way, just for, I suppose, just for a bit of variety, I've put the entire two over pi or scaling term on the inverse transform. So that's all I've got to say in this particular video. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the complex Fourier integral and finally derive the Fourier transform. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you might also give universityphysicstutorials.com a view. Thank you.